Hi, this is Cheryl McQueen, designer with Del Bellos Designs. Today we're going to create a lovely winter scene and feature the wonderful Lavinia Icicle stamp. I love this stamp and find that it is not used very often by people, but it is just a, such a fun stamp to use. Once you get, you get it and try to use it on your projects, I think you'll love it too. So let's take a look at the supplies that we're going to use to create this beautiful um, secret garden in the winter. So we'll start out by using the Multifarious Smooth and Supreme cardstock. I cut this one to four and a half inches by six and a half inches. We will put a frame around the outside of the card. And with that, I'll just use a plain white card stock. This one I have cut to four and three quarter inches by six and three quarter inches. For our card base, we'll use a blue card stock. This one I have cut to be 10 inches by seven inches and then just folded it in half. For our stamps today, we're going to use the Lavinia Secret Garden sign. This one is LAV 746. We will use the Icicle stamp by Lavinia. This one is LAV 089. We will use the tree stamp. This one is LAV 643. We will use Felicity. She is LAV 222. We will use the Fern Branch. LAV 578 and for our little snowflake here I have the um, Nellie's Choice this one is called Sw Flower Swirls and Snowflakes for our ink for the uh, stamping we're going to use the Versafine Claire Nocturne and we will use two colors of the Distress Inks We'll use Chipped Sapphire and Stormy Sky. We're also going to use some masks. This is kind of hard to see, I know, but uh, this is just a little hill mask. And then I have got a circle mask. This one is cut as um, about an uh, inch and a quarter on that circle. We will also um, be using a couple of pens today. We have the Sakura pens. Um, we've got the Jelly Roll White and the Jelly Roll in the Glitter. I'll also be using a very fine tip uh, black pen as well. To create our little snow effects here, we're going to use the Pink Ink Fluff It Paste. I'll also be using blending brushes and a couple of little daubers. We'll want to have some water on hand. I've got a little spray bottle that I keep my water in. And then when we are ready to put our card together, we will use a uh, running tape, or you can also use a paper um, permanent glue. This one is the Ultra Bond Adhesive. If we will also, in order to, for the fluff it paste, you will need to have a heat tool. That's what helps it to puff up. And then, of course, we finally will be using our stamping platform. And um, I like to put a little sticky grid down so that I don't have to use magnets with mine. So, let's get started on our project. As I said before, um, one of the stamps that we'll be using is the icicle stamp. Um, I love the way uh, this icicle stamp looks. And a fun thing too with this, I actually made a little dragon card a while back, did a video tutorial on this. You can also use these icicles to be stalactites and stalagmites. So um, it's, it's a lot of fun that you can use this little um, small stamp with. Um, so give it a try. All right, so let's start out by getting our multifarious cardstock. I am actually going to go ahead and tape it down so that it doesn't wiggle around too much on me while I'm doing my 
um, blending around my uh, mask. So I'm going to take the moon mask, the circle mask, and put it up here in my right hand corner. Just kind of put that down there. And then I'm going to take my snow mask, my hill mask here for my creating the snow, and put it down here at the bottom. I'm going to I go ahead and I like to tape them down. That just keeps them from wiggling and causing problems later on as I'm working it if I if I happen to lose my grip on it. So that just makes it a little bit easier for me. So we're going to start out with our stormy sky. And with this one, I'm just going to do it all over the entire surface above the um, hills and um, over our moon mask. And I'm not going to worry too terribly much about it being all solid one color. I'm just going to apply it. If I have darker spots or lighter spots, that's okay because obviously when we look up at the sky and everything, you don't see just one solid color. You're going to see different shades. So we're, that's what we're going to do is just go over it and not worry too much about it being all even in solid color. Again, this color is the stormy sky. This just kind of helps us to get some basics down here on the color. Okay, so now we've got a little bit of a light blue background on our card. Then we can move on to the chip sapphire. With the chip sapphire, I'm not going to do it solid. I'm going to actually kind of just do it around in, in different places so that we do definitely have our several shades in our sky. So I'd like to let just a little bit of that lighter color show through. We're not going to make it all solid. So when you get it how you like for it to look, then you can go ahead and remove your moon mask and your landscape mask. You will be needing your landscape mask here again in a moment, so don't put it away. Now in order for it to look like we've got some snowflakes coming down, we are going to take our water and a paper towel. Let me grab a paper towel here. And we're going to do a mist over the surface. Let that sit for just a second. What that does is it actually removes the ink when we dab it with the paper towel. 
So it looks like we've got the snow coming down. I may do just a little bit more. I usually end up using the regular Distress inks when I'm doing this kind of a project, um, mainly because uh, the Distress ink actually comes out uh, when you use the water. It actually leaves white behind it. Whereas when you're using the oxides, you've got that pigment in, or in, in there that is not going to lift off. So that is one of the reasons that I like to use the regular Distress. But you can use the Distress Oxide if that's what you've got and still get the same effect. All right, so now let's go ahead and grab our stamping platform. And we're going to take this off. I can go ahead and take the little piece of painter's tape off the back. I'm going to move a couple of my things aside that I've got up here so we don't bump it. And I'm going to lay my card down on my sticky grid. I actually may need to get a new sticky grid. I've used it. That's the nice thing about it. You can use it over and over again. But it does lose its adhesion after quite a few uses. So now let's go ahead and put in our secret garden sign. And I'm just going to place it over here, kind of on the right-hand side. Somewhere right around in there, I think, will be good. You know, close that up. Get our Versafine Claire Nocturne. And ink up our stamp. And then press down and like to make sure that I get solid contact with my paper. But the reason I love the stamping platform is because if it doesn't quite turn out the right the first time, I can do it a second time and it'll line up just fine. All right, there we go. We've got our secret garden sign on there. Let me remove this stamp. All right. Now we want to go ahead and... Um, put in our other little bit of snow. So I'm going to actually take this and place it. Let me scoot this up so that you can see it here. There we go. I'm going to place my mask just so that it looks like these little legs of the sign are kind of sticking out of that particular little mound of snow. So I'm going to take that and now I'm going to get the uh, stormy sky out again. Take a little bit of a dauber and then I'm just going to add brushing up against my mask. I'm just going to add a little bit of a snow effect there. So we've got, looks like we've got just a little hill. And then let's go ahead and move this and create just a little bit more of one. Get a couple little mounds of snow going. All right. Now we can go ahead and set that aside. And then uh, in order to give it a little bit of detail, I like to take my fine black pen and just draw a little bit of a grounding and some little look like what the grass sprigs kind of coming up out of the snow. Right around the base of that sign. And then we're just going to add a few more little sprigs of grass popping through the snow in a few little places here. All 
right, that just gives it to me a little bit more of a realism and a little bit of depth. All right, so now we are ready to go ahead and um, finish stamping our other elements. So let's go ahead and take our tree branch. And I think I want that to just kind of brush the bottom of the moon there. Cover up my distress ink there so that it doesn't dry out. Line that up just across the bottom of the moon. Ink up my stamp there about just a little bit where I don't want it to be. So let me wipe that up just a little bit. All right, and I'm going to go ahead and put a little piece of paper here on the edge just so that I don't get ink all over my sticky grid. Make sure that that's touching all the surfaces. There we go. That looks good. All right, and then go ahead and remove that and line up our fairy. Felicity sitting on the branch here. Felicity is a little bit more solid, so we hopefully we'll get a good impression the very first stamping, but if not, we might have to do her twice. Actually, she turned out pretty good the first time around, so. All right, so now we are going to go ahead and do our icicles. And so let me get this ready so that we can make sure that we get the icicles exactly in the place that we want it to be. So to do our icicles on the sign, they, they're actually a little bit big for the sign. They'll look... Uh, They'll do much better on our branch, but for our sign, they're kind of long. So what I'm going to do is actually take some paper and just mask that off just a little bit. So that we can make sure that we don't get anything where we don't want it to be. So I'm actually only going to use some small parts of this particular stamp. So we will just kind of line that up. And I'm just going to put a little ink on that. And press that down. Let's see if we can get that one a little more solid on there. There we go. Now, because of the way these are split out, we're actually going to kind of layer over. So that kind of overlaps, but because we've got the masking on there, you won't be able to tell that we've actually layered anything. We just want to be sure that we can get several different layers and lengths of our icicles on the on our sign. 
All right, let's see. Maybe get one that's a little bit longer here. And that one was a really good second generation, so I'm not going to re-ink re that one. Let's get one here. Oops. Got some ink on my door there. Let's make sure we don't get that smudged on the card. Alright, and let's go ahead and maybe do one more tiny little one. Right in between those two. That one, we might be able to do a second generation without any problem. There we go. Alright, and so when we remove our mask, then you can see that we have got our icicles on our sign. Now we'll go ahead and move on to putting icicles on the tree branch. And I'm going to basically do the same thing. I'm going to mask it off. Get that smoothed out so it doesn't buckle up. And we will put go ahead and have that one coming down a little bit longer since we've got room over here on that side and get that placed Link up our stamp Just move on down the length of the tree branch. And I think we'll do one more. little bunch maybe right about there all right I think that's gonna look really neat and there we go. There are our icicles hanging off of the bottom of our tree branch. So now we can go ahead and finish out the stamping. We're going to go ahead and do our little snowflake now. This is just a little teeny tiny little snowflake. I just want it to look like it's kind of going down into her hand. need to press very hard with that because we don't want to push so hard that we smush all the design together and the little tiny little parts of the snowflake. All right and now let's go ahead and fill in our winter branches. So we are using the fern and I'm going to actually use, let's see, I think I've got two pieces that we will use. And I think I actually ended up putting one down on the floor, so I am going to stop the camera for a second and go pick that up, and then we will put the fern branches on. Alright, so now we have got our little 
two pieces here. You can tell I love this using this one. I use it all the time, so it's a little stained up, but that's okay because it still does what we need it to do. And again, I'm going to go ahead and just lay a little piece of paper here. And then I'm going to overlap this. Have that coming down right about there. And, <coughs> excuse me, sorry, get that branch in there, and I'm actually going to go ahead and move this down just a little bit, and move that one up there, we'll go ahead and have a little bit of it coming down out of the corner. Let's go ahead and move to the little bit smaller branch to kind of get one right there. one that will kind of go just a little bit down over her wings. And then see, get just a couple more on there. Let's do the thinner branch again. Across this way just a little bit. All right. So now we have finished getting our stamps done so we can remove our stamping platform. And now we can go ahead and detail some things out. Now, I've got ink on my hands and I know myself. I will get it all over my project. So I'm going to get just a little bit of a baby wipe here. And wipe my hands down before we move on so we hopefully don't get any ink all over our card. All right. So at this point in time, we're going to go ahead and take our white Sakura Jelly Roll pen. And I'm just going to add some snow onto my branches.
All right, so that just gives us a little bit of a effect of the snow on those ferns. And now let's take our glitter pen and we are going to sparkle up a few things. I think the snowflake, I always like to go ahead and add some glitter on that. And then we're going to go ahead and go like just color over our icicles with the glitter pen and hopefully I'll be able to get you to be able to see what it looks like. Unfortunately sometimes when you're trying to film the glitter doesn't show very well. I really love the way the glitter pen looks on the icicles. It really gives it that effect of, of the crystal clear sparkly icicle. And then I'm just going to go ahead and put a little bit on her wings as well. I always feel like fairy wings sparkle. All right, so let's see if I can get this to an angle. Well, you can kind of see how pretty the glitter pen makes it look to give it that that nice winter look. All right, and now we will go ahead and add our snow with our fluff and paste to our sign and our branch. With the fluff and paste, it's just like what it sounds like. It's kind of a thick paste. I usually, let's see, I usually try to get like a little flat paintbrush. Just dab it in. Pick some up on your paintbrush. It's kind of hard to see, but just kind of a, a little um, dollop of it, I guess you would call it. And then we're just going to kind of dab it on. And it doesn't have to be smooth or consistent. So we're just trying to kind of get the effect that the snow is piled up on top of the sign and on the branch. So just kind of dab it on there a little bit. And you can do just as little or as much as you like. All right. Now you will need to go ahead and, and clean your brush off as quickly as you can because the um, uh, paste will dry on it. So I'm just going to really quickly wipe it off really um, on my paper towel here and maybe even spritz a little bit of water on there and just be sure I get it cleaned off because it will get stiff. All right, close this up and then we will take our heat tool. And I'm going to zoom in on this just a little bit and see if you're going to be able to kind of see what it does when I heat it up. So, if you can see that there, that's the reason they call it fluff it paste is because when you add the heat to it, it actually puffs up. 
kind of try and get to see so that you can see the dimension there. So that makes it looks like the snow is sitting on top of our branches and on top of our sign. Gives it a nice little effect by doing that. All right, so one of the things that I like to do, I like to um, give just a little bit of a framing edging around my card. I just feel like it pulls the eye to the center. So I'm just going to take my chip sapphire and a little dauber. And I'm just going to kind of brush and circle around the edge. Create just a little bit of a dark frame. It's kind of a little distressing technique too. You don't have to do this, but I've always just really liked the way it looks and how it just kind of feels like to me that it's a finishing touch. Now, like I said, it just kind of draws the eye to the center. There we go. Alright. And so now we are ready to go ahead and put our card together. So we will take our frame piece of cardstock. I'm going to flip this over. And it's a little bit faster, so I'll go ahead and use my tape instead of my glue, but you can use either one. And then get that centered. And then, finally, get our card base, do the same thing. And there we go. There is our finished product. Obviously, if you'd like to, you can always put a sentiment on the inside. Or if you want to put something down here on that corner. I just like it like that. I think it just looks very pretty and pure that way. Okay, so I hope that you enjoyed watching my video tutorial today. And that you have fun making this card. Be sure to try out the icicles. Um, stamp. I just, I'll have so much fun with that one. I think you will too. Remember to check out the DelBellasDesigns.com website for more tutorials on the design team page. Have a great day! Mm -hmm.